This video is provided to you by my Udemy courses. I have a lot of Udemy courses regarding Swift UI, iOS development, combined MVVM design pattern. I highly encourage you to check out my Udemy courses and the best way to check out my courses is to take a look at the YouTube description where you will find all the links and the coupon codes for my courses. Thank you so much for viewing this video and supporting my channel. Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. And in this video, you're going to learn how to create a multi-state button in SwiftUI. Now, a multi-state button is basically a button that can have multiple states. It can have two states, three, five, ten, whatever you want. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I will do is I will create my states. So let's say that we are working on an application that allows us to go through the states of an oven. Uh, oven light can be dim, it can be lit, or it can be off. So these are three states. So I'm just going to say light, and I'm also going to say dim, and then off. All right, these are the different three states for an oven. And what we want to do is we want to create a state button that will go through these all three states and allow us to toggle between all the three states. So how would we do that? Now, instead of creating a button that only works with the oven state, wouldn't it be nice if we can create a button that will just work with any kind of a state? So any kind of enum. So this means that we can go ahead and create a button state as a protocol. And we can also make sure that we can iterate through those states that we have, light, dim, off, or some other states. We will also have a title property, which will be only getter. Now we can go ahead and extend our button state, where the person who is using this, it must conform to raw representable, and also the raw value, we will make sure it is string. Now we can go ahead and implement the only property that is required in the button state, which is title, and we can simply go ahead and return the raw value. This means that if you have an oven state and it needs to use a button state, it needs to make sure that it is conforming to button and also button state. And now we can go ahead and assign some sort of a raw values. And there we go. Great. Now all we need to do is to actually implement a state button that can go through these states. So one time we will click on the button, it will be light. Next time we will click on the button, it will be dim. Next time we click on the button, it will be off. For this, I'm going to go ahead and create the button right over here. You can obviously create it in a different file, but I'm just going to create it right here. It's going to be a generic button, which will work on the button state view, because we are creating a view. This means we need to have a body. And in the body, for now, I'm just going to return state button. Let's go ahead and at least display this. So if I go over here, I should be able to create this particular button. Right now, I'm not really passing anything. So you can see that T, the type, it can't really be seen. I mean, we don't really know the type at this point. It would be nice if in the button, state button, we can pass in the different states. So let's go ahead and do that. Let states, and it will be an array of T. We were going to pass in the states for the oven state. So if I go over here and I implement this, I have to pass in the states, and that can be oven state dot all cases. So now the type can be inferred because we are passing in the oven state. Next up, we are going to make sure that we are tracking the current index. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a local 
state, a private state, current index, and initialize it with zero. And we also want to give the person the selected state. That's the important part, which is of type T. This means that when you're creating the state button, you must pass in the selected state. So let's go to the state over here, or, the, or our kind of content view. We're going to define the selected state as a state property. And since we're working with oven, I'm just going to assign it the oven state and fill in the missing selected state. This means that we are passing in the argument selected state. The selected state is defined as state. And when it goes to the state button, it is stored in a binding property, which means if we change the state over here, that is going to change the state that you passed in, which will cause the button to re-render. Now we do want to make sure that we are passing in the state over here. So we are missing a couple of different things over here. We are missing the selected state. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in a selected state of light. Perfect. All right. The other things you can see over here that it is saying content due to the protection level. So the due to the protection level, we are not able to access that. So let's see that what exactly is going on over here. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the private part over here, and that should be all okay. All right, let's go ahead and build it. We're still getting one error. Let's go ahead and check out the error. Missing argument over here also. This is our root view, so we must pass something over here. I'm going to pass in light. Okay. Now, in the state button, we are not really doing anything. If we are creating a button, we should probably at least start with a button. So we will start with a button, action. This is the action, and this is a label. The label should simply display whatever the current index is indicating. So we will go to the states, we will use the current index, and we will display the title. That is already string. We can also make sure that the title is of a particular maximum weight, but that is something that you can come up with yourself. And we will also make sure that the button style is border prominent. But again, that's just for you. You can use anything you want. If I go ahead and run the application, you can see that the light state is currently being displayed. But if, if I run this and I click on light, it, nothing happens. What it should do is go through the other states of the oven state, which is light, dim, and off. But it's not really doing anything. The reason it's not doing anything is because we haven't really implemented anything in the button click. In the button click, we will first go ahead and increment the counter. If the counter is less than the states.count minus one, then we will go ahead and increment it, current index plus one, or else we are just going to return or reset the counter to zero. And finally, we will do the selected state, which will be states, and passing in the current index. Now let's go ahead and run our application. Now you can see that we are able to go through all the different states of the button. These states are coming from oven state. If you want to use this particular button with some other states, you can also do that. Just make sure to create an enum. Make sure that the raw representable is string and it is conforming to the button state. The next thing we want to do is since we are passing in the selected state, which is marked as state, every time we click on the button and the selected state property changes, it also causes a render in our body. But right now, it's not really doing anything since we are not checking for anything. So now we can go ahead over here and we can check something. 
I'm going to go ahead and put everything inside a group. And now we can check for the selected state. You can see that we have light, dim, and off. Another thing we can do is change the foreground. Obviously, we have to implement over here something. Well, let's go ahead and start with a simple text view, which is going to simply display whenever a state is changing. Also, I would like to put everything inside of VStack. I forgot to do that, and that's why you can see on the right side the preview is going a little bit crazy. There we go. Now, if I go ahead and build this application again and run it, you can see that as soon as I select a state, it actually shows me that particular text. What I would like to do is to display some sort of an image. Now, you can use any other technique to get the image. I'm just going to use these San Francisco symbols. And you can see that we have light bulb, we have light bulb off, and light bulb fill. So let's go ahead and use these different things uh, or different icons to our advantage. When it is light bulb, we can use a system image of light bulb dot fill. If it is dim, then we are simply going to, since we don't really have an image for a dim, so we're just going to use light bulb. And finally, if it is off, we will use light bulb dot slash, or you know, you can use any one of those things. Light bulb dot slash. Also, we're going to make sure that we have a certain foreground property. So foreground dot yellow to indicate light and the font size we can increase to be system font to be 32. You can even go a little bit further on to be 60. Great. Let's go ahead and run this. Light, this means this is the current state. Dim, this is the current state and off. Now, if you want to handle it a little bit differently, like when you actually press on light, then it will light and press on dim, it will be dim. Then you'll have to think about over here that what kind of things you want to do right here, actually. Right. But right now you can see that we can go through three different states. Light, we have uh, dim, we have off. All right. So that is it. Uh, now you have seen how to build a multi-state button. Again, make sure that if you don't like this approach, meaning if you click off, then it should say off, then you will have to go over here and you will have to change those things. So if it's light, then you should display something else. But this is kind of like up to you if you like what you uh, want to do. Currently, it's displaying the current state. Like it is dim, it is off, and all of those states. But if you don't like it, well, try it out a little bit differently. All right. So there you have it. This is how you will create a multi-state button in Swift UI.